good afternoon. It's around 12.35. Um, I just had some things on my mind today. I, I know I put out a little video yesterday, but uh, I was thinking about some things that we're going to, um, we're actually going to have our Wednesday night Bible study tomorrow night, and we're doing it over Re the book of Revelation. And the first chapter is a pretty, de pretty good, um, good, pretty good start on what we're going to be doing. But one of the things um, I was I was thinking about, I, because after doing you know the study and looking at it and thinking about everything that we go through in our society with what is church and how we meet and all the different denominations, um, one of the if you think about it, just you know all the different denominations we got and everybody is, uh, you know everybody is against one another, pretty much on doctrine and either you go one extreme to where you just you know a church says that you know it doesn't matter what you do um, how you live your life you just abuse grace and, and God is going to forgive you you can you know you can be in full blown adultery and if you die you're going to go to heaven because you, you said a prayer and then there's a whole nother side of Pentecostals where um, at the drop of every I mean, every little sin that comes across your mind, you can lose your salvation. There's, there's no happy medium. And, um, but I, one of the things I'm thinking, if we, one on both sides, you know, the, the, the hyper grace, and then also on the, the hyper legalism. Um, when you think about what the word says, the word never says anything about legalism. It does say it. It talks about holiness. And it talks about obedience to the Lord, and that's not legalism. But people on the hyper grace side says it is, because there's no rules. Well, that's not true. That you've never read your Bible. You you take one or two verses, or you're listening to a televangelist tell you, you know, there's, you know, you get there's no rules. The and there's no rules per se. When you say rules. You automatically want to want to break them, but it's not rules. It's obedience because we love Jesus, and and it, he literally says that's not a burden burdensome to do that. It's not burdensome to um, uh, to obey him. He says if you love me, obey my commandments. That's John fourteen fifteen, but. When that when the hyper grace people hear anything about obedience, they they put the brakes on, they yell legalism, they yell Pharisee. But whenever you have um, a legalist that make up rules as they go, because because of their denomination, I mean, and every denomination does it. Don't get me wrong; everyone has their set rules, but. I'm talking about a real legalistic group. They they have no grace. There's no grace at all. It's like they take the grace of God and throw it out the window, um, and they they only hear their denominational rules. You know, don't cut your hair. You got to wear long sleeves. You you know you can't do this. You can't do that. You know, we'll disfellowship you. All the different things, and that's not obedience to the Lord. That's obedience to the man. Of whoever runs that that denomination so but when if you truly would obey the Lord and you would truly rest in his grace we would just imagine what the church would actually do how how much of an impact the church would have compared to what we do today we say we have a huge impact well majority of the impact we have is um, is a system that we want to point people to. The impact is not pointing them to Jesus; it's pointing to a system, and that is not what the Word wants us to. Uh, when you read the Word of God, Jesus wants us to be pointed to Him, and allow us to be led by the Holy Spirit, and to to live out our faith every day. So. I would say, you know, when we look at this, let's, you know, let's live like what the what Galatians 5 tells us, that 
we need to walk by the Spirit, right? We need to, there is the, um, the fruit of the Spirit that should be evident, should have be evidence in our life to prove that we are saved because faith without works is dead. And in most evangelical churches, you say faith without works is dead, they automatically think legalistic, working for your salvation. But that's what the word says, not working for your salvation, but that our faith should have works behind it automatically. When we walk in our faith, there's going to be works that follow it. Works don't don't pull our faith. Our faith is in the lead. It is the caboose whenever, whenever in our life that the faith in Jesus. Jesus is the engineer and he's and he's he's operating that train. But our works should be, he says he prepared good works in advance for us to walk in and to do. So, and we should not ignore grace. We should know that we have that beautiful grace if we fall, that that grace is there to catch us. But once we start abusing grace, and once we start uh, um, hardening our hearts, there is a falling away that, that can happen. We can be shipwrecked. And when, if we have that, that thought and know, and know that, we should try to strive for holiness because we're going to live a re repentant lifestyle. So something to think about. Thanks for the time. Y'all have a great day. Have a great evening. God bless.